Hi guys, this is Annie from Mommy Trades. Hope you guys are having a fabulous Saturday. Um, I am just preparing from some friends to come over tomorrow. Um, I'm having this potluck party at my house, so I don't have to do all that cooking. Um, anyways, now let's just talk about the market. What a roller coaster week we had. Full of China news, Fed rate expectations, um, then these tweets from White House, and then all sorts of other stuff. It becomes very hard to trade on technical levels in such environment. But that is good about, uh, but you know, what, what's good about such market is that it provides a whole lot of volatility and movement. Who cares if it's against our view of a certain stock or even stock market as a whole? As traders, we should not care about all that as that is something in, we, we individual traders will never be able to control. So what we need to do is to accept it and trade around it. The best way to do that is to have a plan. And when the chart plays it out for you, you trade along. You are not going to predict. You will only react like I always say. Now, I, I do get asked a lot about what technical indicators I use to trade. If RSI divergence or MACD crossovers are in my book of studies. Um, do I like Ichimoku Cloud, whatever the hell that is? Or if, if someone asks me, hey, what is that Fibonacci? What was that in Fibonacci retracement? Honestly, I don't know whatever I, I i don't know much about these yes someone might be successful with those or something else an exotic like money flocks index or bullinger bands but in my personal opinion um, those are more appropriate if you're trading stocks and i do use a couple of them when i am doing my stock entries but not for options trading for options day trading i keep things simple my only tools are price and volume. Everything else is lagging to me when it comes to options. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. Let us talk about um, the few trades we made this week. Why I took those and if something did not work out, why was that? It is always, always good to review your work. See where you can improve and, you know, just to, to kind of self-inspect yourself. And it is very much possible that it was not a bad setup. The problem was self-discipline. And frankly speaking, every one of us struggles with that. And it is very okay to accept that. It is, you know, I mean, it's only when you are going to accept your weakness you can you can you can work to improve it right you can't just improve yourself without accepting where you are weak at so here are all the trades from this week mm. so let us look at the one that did not work now amazon call that we took this morning and closed within few minutes so my net notes you know said to get into calls above 1834.50 and I got distracted and did not wait for it here so I entered right here seeing that it was you know going out on good volume nice momentum but I broke my rule of the level which I had in my mind and I just entered uh, the Amazon call uh the trade setup i posted was good i just did not stick to it and just you know i got caught up in fomo it really happens but i am a human and something that we all can work on so let us look at this ba from friday the setup said to buy it above the hourly resistance of 336.5 and that is exactly what we did and I think it was uh, around uh, midday, I think, I believe, that we took the BA trade. 
and the level I had in mind, or, you know, I had the pre alert as the, on the chart uh, for you guys in the morning too. The level for the hourly resistance again was 336.5. So I knew that a candle close above that can give us a nice, you know, write up. And that is exactly what we did. And the BA stock did make that move. We entered the 345 calls for next week, and all, all of us did make some profits there. Why? because we did stick to the plan. Another trade from August 7th, uh, uh, which was the Wednesday, the ADBE trade. Um, now I wanted to get in calls above the weekly resistance point of 286. That is exactly what we did. And the calls paid us nice profits from 2.8 all the way above four. As you know, I trim profits as we move along. So my average exit price for that was 3.6. The concept is that you do your homework, uh, stick to your plan and simply react and execute as the plan plays out. Yes, you know, there, there are trades I take as I see them happen, but I think we find high success when you are prepared to react to a certain price level in advance. What does that what it does is that it increases your confidence level and you know there is some logic behind the trade that you are taking. It's just not, you know, just any trade that you are just feeling at that moment. Moreover, when I share these setups in the morning, it helps. It helps you put triggers and alerts as well. It it gets you started as well, and it helps you getting prepared in case the setup plays out. So, you know, that way you are prepared in advance and you will know that you will not waste time in entering an order. You know which contract you will buy and all, you know, you have to do is execute when a setup comes to life. For example, I had this team uh, set up yesterday uh, for the price of uh, 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 146.1 uh, uh, above that to enter calls above 146.1. So we did get that level. And I know some of you did inbox me saying that they got in the setup and they did make good profits there. Um, so that's, you know, all about execution when the, when, the, when the chart plays out. So of course you have to watch out for volume and the overall trend market also needs to be seen. But, but once you know um, you have these levels, it's, it's, it's it, it gives you confidence. It's easier to play. Now, the team, it went up till 147.59. That was the high of yesterday. That means almost a dollar uh, and 50 cents move from that point onwards. So that would have given some good profits to people who took it. Congratulations to those who did. So um, if the trading setup is something that you, uh, you know, uh, you do not agree with it is completely fine. If, if, if my trading setup it does not satisfy you, that's completely fine. That is how it should be. I'm not always right. No one is. So, 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 you know, use your own guidance also at the same time, because I always say my alert service is not just for sending out alerts. It's more about also educating you guys, um, to make decisions independently, not just, you know, photocopying trades without any logic, but just to know what's going on behind the trades. Um, let us review QQQ. It represents the tech sector, the technology sector. Now, basically it moves when your Apple moves, uh, when you uh when 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 amazon and google moves and other stocks like facebook microsoft netflix so let us see what we expect next week and how we should prepare now what i do is that i like to start with a higher time frame here is a weekly chart okay so i see an uptrend line on the weekly here, you see that? And look at the weekly bullish trend bars that you see on this higher time frame, right on the trend line. 
The difference is that this bullish bar could not manage uh, to close above the low of previous week. Notice how last time this happened. Now the bullish candle was an engulfing bar right here. You see how it's it's an engulfing bar. It complete it completely overshadowed the red week. The one before that was also not bad as the green bar closed almost at the midpoint of its previous week. And this week we could not close above the previous week's low point. Now let us now drill to a daily chart. So let me pull that out for you guys here. Okay, so now you see Thursday was a nice gap fill and it closed, it managed to close above the 50 EMA. Friday ended up being an inside day and a close back below the 50 EMA. Now something to keep in mind, again, I'm not implying anything because as traders, we don't care about that. We want to trade both ways, whatever the opportunity provides us with. We are, we're not going to make predictions here. We're going to react, but we're just getting mentally prepared here what to expect. On a daily time frame, the range is the top of this bullish bar. Let us drill down to the hourly. Here, now, let me draw a couple of trend lines for you guys here. Now, this is a sort of an upward, this is upward channel. And if you zoom in a bit, you can see that there are more top wicks here. That means selling pressure still exists. So we are seeing some sellers coming in, pressurizing the price. The last red bar also had big volume, meaning traders just sold before the weekend. So now a break of this channel to the downside and the support level would accelerate a bearish move. Of course, I can dive in a bit more into the 15 minute chart as well and break it down a bit more, but uh, this is weekend and I want to leave the house for some time. So if you want, you can review this part of the video again and understand a little bit more. And if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to um, send me a message on my Twitter account or you can also reach me through email. I would be more than happy to help you or answer your questions as timely as I can. So guys, take care of yourselves. Hope you pick a thing or two from this. And I know I always, uh, uh, you know, uh, love hearing back from you. And uh, thank you so much for all the wonderful feedback and appreciation you guys give me all throughout the week. Um, this is all that keeps me going. And um, one more thing uh, before I end up this video is that my platform is not an overnight get rich quick um, alert uh, platform. It's more about consistency. It's more about generating that consistent income. So, you know, um, and, and I like to provide the wisdom behind the trades that we are taking. So be consistent and uh, do not always look for bigger profits. Look for consistency more than that, and that would make you more successful. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Take care. See you guys on Monday. Bye.